So the picture that you see is another unsolved murder victim in California City. And there wasn't a very much online about Mr. Piper, Charles Piper. Um, and I luckily was contacted in the comments by a relative, his granddaughter Erica, and she was very helpful. She was very um, forthcoming about her thoughts about, you know, the actual murder and memories of her grandfather and um, uh, just a, another very disturbing, sad, senseless, unsolved murder. And I'm going to read the obituary first because there just isn't a whole lot uh, that was put out there. So I'm just going to present what was put out there and then we're going to get into what the grand granddaughter had to tell me. Very um, emotional for her and for me, but mostly of course for her and her family. But uh, in the Victoria Advocate is his obituary, Charles Allen Piper, California City. Charles Allen Piper of California City, California passed from this life, Saturday, December 1st, 2012. Charles, as he was known to family and friends, was born to Walter and Ida Helen Piper on November 24th, 1937. He grew up in the Five Mile community and attended school at, I can't read my own writing, at the Cliff, yeah, I'm sorry, at uh, Radcliffe and, my writing, my, I cannot read this for the life of me and Oquero High School, I remember, where he participated in all sports. He accepted a baseball scholarship to attend the University of Houston in Houston and later, later undertook graduate studies in geography at the University of Texas in Austin. And as, uh, you know what, I'm going to get this on my phone because I can't read it on this piece of paper. Much better. As an educator by uh, profession, Charlie was also passionate about fishing, gardening, cooking for friends, promoting, promoting his wife Nelda's artwork, and enjoying getaways to Las Vegas. He served on the Planning Commission in California City. Throughout his working and retirement years, he built community gardens for schools in the city in a mentor role with young people. No services are planned. We can best honor Charlie's memory by gathering with friends over good home cooking and a beer. So what I found in the newspapers and the thanks to the for the obituary that came from his granddaughter Erica, because I would have never found that on my own, because it's it's so sparse. So the only three pieces I found about him on the internet, and I scoured newspapers.com, which I have an account to, and you know, using different um, search engines to Google him and nothing really came up with absolutely nothing on december 3rd 2012 um the bakersfield californian um wrote this and then it was updated september 7th 2016 
The man found dead in a California city home Sunday was identified as a member of the city's planning commission, according to the California City Police Department. Charles Piper, 75, was found dead by a neighbor in a home on the 8,000 block of Holly Avenue, according to a police news release. Piper had served on the California City Planning Commission for many years and is well known in the community, according to the news release. An autopsy is scheduled for Tuesday. Police are continuing to investigate the death. Then there was this other Bakersfield, KBAK, KBFK, that said, California City Police are investigating the death of a well-known citizen. Charles Piper, 75, was found dead in a home Sunday morning on Holly Avenue. Officers discovered evidence of foul play, police said, prompting a homicide investigation. Piper served for many years on the city's planning commission, according to police. The department hasn't named any, any suspects or released information about a cause of death. And uh, the only other thing was from the Tehachapi Alerts on Facebook. This, this place. December 3rd. The man found dead in a California city home Sunday was a member of the city's planning commission. Charles Piper, 75, was found dead by a neighbor. He has served on the California city planning commission for many years and is well known in the community. Police found evidence of foul play relating to Piper's death. An autopsy is scheduled for Tuesday. Police are continuing to investigate the death. And then there's a comment. The home is still cordoned off with a police officer on duty in front. Um, I did not find in my searches anywhere any follow-up at all. There's, you know, he's a well-known community member. He has served the planning commission for the city for years and there's no plaque there's no memorial to him there was no i have no idea if california city did anything for him whatsoever and from what you can tell in those those few little snippets of of news articles and the one is a transcript from a news clip there wasn't a whole lot of information to go by. And so a woman contacted me and she identified herself as the grandson or the granddaughter of Charles Piper. She provided me the picture that you see in the, in the beginning. Um, she described him as a, as a great guy. He'd give you the shirt off his back. He loved to fish. And as you can see, he looked like an athletic man. Like he really did, you know, he evidently when he was younger, he was involved in all kinds of sports and, and athletics. He seemed very active, also a very kind man. And you could tell that by looking at him as well. Um, not that all kind looking people are good people, but everything that ha ha is said about him, um, including from his family, is that he was a he was just a really salt of the earth kind of guy. And then I wanted to ask some questions before I let Erica just sort of tell me whatever she wanted to tell me. She was willing to answer some questions. And so now we're gonna get right down into it. And if you're watching, if you stumbled on this video and you don't have a stomach for, um, I mean, you saw the picture of him, you know he was a great guy. If it's gonna be bothersome to you to hear what I'm about to say, you can mute me or you can tune out altogether or fast forward. So I had asked her, um, what do you what do you think happened to him? Um was it you know, do you think it was random? Because the news, even today, when you listen to the chief on Dateline talk about uh, Charles Piper, he says suspected burglary and, you know, that sort of thing. And so I wanted to know if that was, the, if that's how the family felt and what were they told? 
and here's how she answered. It was someone he knew because there was no forced entry. They tied him to a chair and beat him for hours and shot him in the back of the head execution style, robbed him and took off. It happened late at night. She believes, she further told me when I spoke to her on the phone, that it was a setup to look like a robbery because the grandmother's jewelry was gone. Her grandmother's jewelry was gone. But none of the other valuables in the house were touched. There were oil paintings that were worth thousands of dollars, and there were many of them in the house and uh, that her grandmother had painted. None of that was taken. None of the other valuables were taken. And I asked her, what do you know about how the police handled it? Was the crime scene preserved? Fingerprints, etc. She said, they taped everything off, but they didn't wear protective gear, so that would be considered tampering. And this is 2012, not 1930. There's no excuse for that. Has, and I asked her, has anyone stayed in touch with the family with updates and information? She said, no. No one has stayed in touch. I did for a few months, then I just stopped because every time I called, they said nothing has been coming up and they're busy with the newer cases. They got, it's got, they, uh, they got, it's got pushed to the back burner. And I asked her if an autopsy was performed in a timely manner. And she said, I'm not sure if there was one in his will. He donated his body to science. So, it, it says here there was an autopsy set to be performed on Tuesday. I don't know if that ever happened. And I asked her if it was okay that I used her name and that I shared that I got this information from her. And she said, go for it, basically. I'm paraphrasing. She Go right ahead is actually what she said. Um, and this is her comment at the bottom of my questions. And since they've told me that there was three people involved and my grandpa was a nice person but he wouldn't open his door late at night for a stranger he's never seen police uh, said it was someone he knew since learning that I've been going back through memories trying to piece everything together and then she said you know thank you and offered to answer more questions if I wanted to and I could call her and I did because with those answers, I had more questions. And I asked, you know, how, when did they find your father? Um, and she said that she was under the impression it was her aunt that had called, didn't get answer from, the, from her dad, so went to the house and couldn't get in. So called the police for a welfare check. They couldn't get in. They had to break in. So the doors were locked from the inside. I don't know if the police checked windows, other points of entry, if they look for footprints in the, in the sand by under any window. I have no idea how thorough this investigation went. And evidently she doesn't know either. The police share nothing with her. So... He'd been there, um, evidently, for a day or two, maybe more. And that's when they found him tied and beaten and shot. And I asked her, was there anything that you know of in the city at that time? Because 2012, I, you know, as I'm researching the unsolved murders and the and the missing i'm coming across when i search it um that there's a lot of suspicion of 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 corruption and shady stuff going on within our little local government embezzling um it's just like all kinds of stuff uh theft um i'm coming across like a lot of stuff and in particular, Chief Hurtado, who'd been in, who'd been chief of police for, for a while um, during most of our unsolved cases, um, he was really making a name for himself, busting weed grow houses. Uh, but 
you know, but we have these outstanding unsolved that seem like they should have been solved within 48 hours. Don't seem, uh, if you do it right, if you've done the, if you've preserved the scene, right? If you've searched it, like followed every protocol, um, those people were in the house for a while. And, and this was very personal. It's almost to me as if he was tied up and they were beating him because they wanted an answer for something. They wanted something from him. And so I asked her, was there anything in particular that you know about, that your family knows about? Because he was an upstanding guy and he evidently, according to granddaughter, was known for calling people out in city council because city council planning commission mayor police chief they all are very closely entwined in every city not just like small towns but in in all and so was there anything that he maybe was frustrated about that he talked about and she said yes and she said there was so much shady stuff going on and he was the guy and then the phone kind of got fuzzy at this time, like it, that kind of spooked me because I'm like, am I being tapped? Is she being tapped? And it was like jammed, but I, so I couldn't quite hear the specific of what she was saying. But yes, the bottom line was there was so much suspected corruption in our city government and the concentration was drug busting um, I think you can kind of put two and two together um, where the the focus was, at, at least anyway, in this town. And that's not to say that crime wasn't solved. If you go to Cal City website and go to the police, there's two and a half years of like daily logs, okay? every Everything they responded to, how, you know, whether, it, I don't even know, if, I don't think they put resolved on any of it. They would just put on there, you know, I uh, responded to domestic violence called, responded to uh, child runaway, responded to uh, burglary alarm, so, you know, so on and so forth. But it it's like a lot. There's a lot that goes on in this little town, a lot, every day, all day. I couldn't believe it. I looked in there and I was like, why don't we have a bigger, you know, police force or security team, some kind of, or have, get rid of police and have Kern County sheriffs come in, you know, have a sheriff station out here and a smaller PD station. Go ahead, keep your small PD force, but bring the sheriffs out. Just a thought. Um, so, she, yeah, definitely the granddaughter feels like it was made, it was staged to look like, um, definitely looked like there was a, something, and then, okay, this is about the other missing, the other murdered guy, um, so, Basically, that's it. You know, she's had to call in for updates. She's had to ask. Um, and she definitely feels like this happened. Once this happened, it was as if everybody just, you know, turned around and walked the other way. And as you can see, there was n nothing basically about planning commissioner do you know what the planning commissioner does and how they're and how they work closely with local government um i'm going to let you know right now okay i'm going to try to run through some of this real quick um what is a planning commission the planning commission is a permanent committee made up of five or more individuals who have been appointed by the governing body, that's city council or board of supervisors, to review and act on matters related to planning and development. Most planning commissioners are lay people without any previous land use experience. 
commissioners serve at the pleasure of the council or board of supervisors, so commission membership may change in response to changes in those bodies. A local agency need not create a planning commission. In some jurisdiction, the governing body functions in what capacity? And then it says why plan um, saves money, sets expectations, so on and so forth. So let's go down here, the commission's duties, which I don't know if there was an actual commission here or if it was just him. That's going to require some more research. The Planning Commission plays a central role in the planning process in three important ways. First, it acts as an advisory board to the main governing body on all planning and development issues. Second, the Commission assures that the general plan is implemented by reviewing development applications on a case-by-case -case basis. Just as you build a building one brick at a time, you implement a community vision one project at a time. Third, the Commission functions as the decision-making body for many proposals. However, any Planning Commission action can be appealed to the governing body, which can uphold the Commission's decision, overturn it, modify it, or send it back for further study. Planning Commission duties vary depending on the jurisdiction. Uh, general plan, specific plan, zoning, subdivision, individual project approvals, report on capital improvements, coordinate planning efforts, consider land acquisition, special studies. I think 2012 was probably the last time that park looked halfway decent, the lake. I get the impression from his granddaughter that there was a very distinct feeling among the community that that the people, the citizens, um, if they didn't play right, were targets uh, by by um, local city government and police, you know, the police and the um, mayor or whatever. Um, I, I haven't I can't comment on that because I don't know I wasn't here but I hear that you know I read that and when I I'm gonna do a video on Chief Hurtado um, because he was in place during most of the unsolved murders and missing cases and when I was researching like his name kept popping up and stuff kept popping up and it got real ugly. So I already read about all that. I already was researching all that when I talked to Erica. And so when she was giving me her feelings and impression and her, and her talking for her mom too, um, I kind of saw that maybe there, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. Like people don't just think stuff unfounded normally, especially if it's like I think the community um, when I asked her, like, what's going on now, she said that she had called and spoke to the investigator out here not long ago, and they said they were really close to solving this case. Very close. Very, very close. So close. But they wouldn't tell her anything like, why now? It, this happened in 2012. Why now? You know, why now are you so close? Why now? What what, are you, what have you done? What did you do then? What did you do now? Like, how are you that close? So, um, we're going to wait and see. Uh, with Matthew Leninger, He's the young man who also was murdered here in Cal City, didn't live here. They specifically said new information popped up about his case. So they're very close on that. They're very close on Devery Schiller. Um, he said very close on all of them. And one of them was a missing person. Uh, Hammond was his name. Uh, 
I believe they found his remains in the Kern River or somewhere near there, but I'm going to do something on him as well because uh, he was found and now it's a homicide, so, a homicide investigation. So let me know like what you think about this. I, I, I see my, 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 my f knee jerk reaction is there's no reason why this has been lingering since 2012. None. I, I I think 48 hours should have been enough time to solve this. I don't believe three people in the house. There wouldn't have been some DNA left. And this, this man, I'm sure, even if he knew who he let in late at night, once they started to overpower him, you don't think he fought? I think this is a guy who would have fought for his life knowing that if he didn't, he may never see his family again. He may never see his kids again. He was obviously very involved in community, family. And even Erica said he, he taught, she didn't like fishing. He loved fishing and he taught her how to, how to, you know, hook, how to fish. And it, it brought back a lot of memories for her talking to me. And I'm going to put some more pictures of, of uh, Mr. Piper at the end of this. But um, another unsolved murder from 2012. And we have one other unsolved murder that goes back even further. So um, that's it for today. Uh, if you can ask questions in the bottom, and I think Erica's going to be going to be um, looking. And if you ask, you can ask her anything you want. She'll she'll respond and, and answer questions and. Um, you know, let's put this out there. Let's share the story of Charles Piper. Let's share this as much. Talk about it. Um, I hope like a ton of people stumble on this and have also watched videos about the boys in Cal City and have watched about, um, you know, Devery and and know about the others. And I, I just would love for this to blow wide open. Wide open. And, and get some needed attention to Cal City um, for a lot of reasons. But, you know, this family has, you know, I can't imagine, no resolution. And here's this good guy, Grandpa, who would give you the shirt off his back, so brutally murdered, and, and you're feeling as if nobody's, nobody's working on it. Nobody's trying to figure it out. Nobody cares. I hear that so much. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So, Charles Piper. I dreamt about him last night. I dreamt about him. I dreamt I was looking for answers. And I went into the building and I went to the planning commission desk and I'm like, you tell me what extension he was last talking to. Tell me the number right now. I don't care if there's a meeting in there. I don't care if there's 20 people in there. I want to know right now. But I'm praying for their family too. Let me put some, some other beautiful pictures of Charles Piper.